Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Maybe you feel sick of my face. <laughs> uh, I always feel some kind of conflicting feeling inside of my heart. Uh, I'm so happy to see your face smiling, uh, in, uh, very excited, and uh, excited enough to travel all the way to Cincinnati. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, as a programmer, as a, I hate to speak before people. <laughs> But what? Something happened, so I can help you. Uh, let me. Hmm. Uh, back in 1993, whoops. Uh, I started programming. I started developing Ruby, just for fun. So, I. I was only a you know, language geek. I just love programming languages. So I love programming, all the programming language. I like Lisp, I like Smalltalk, I like C, I like Pascal, I like uh, C++, and uh, we didn't have PHP yet back then. So I created Ruby just for fun. And it was my pet project. Then something happened. So back then, the Ruby users, one, yeah, me. So then, uh, 1995, I put it in on the internet. So the, far beyond my expectation, I put up the uh, mailing list soon after I released the uh, Ruby, the first version, version 0 0.95, and then I, Soon after I formed the mailing list, so people joined to the mailing list. And uh, the, in a week or two, we got 200 members. So that, that's far beyond my expectation. So you know, the, there are tons of programming languages out there. So most of them are just toy. Yeah, actually, back in 95, so Ruby was a toy. So, you know, the most of the programming language out there are toy languages. Gradually disappear in the history of the internet. Just because, you know, people get sick of seeing new programming language. So I, that was my expectation. So yeah, it was fun to create programming language, design programming language, and I, if I was, I enjoyed uh, the implementing the programming language. It, but uh, I was, yeah, it satisfied me. So the, I just put it on the internet out of coincidence. You know, the copying the software on the internet is free. So I got a lot, I learned a lot from free software. So I read through the source code of Emacs. I learned a lot. Uh, from the reading the free software source code. So I just uh, put my, my software back to the internet just in return. But uh, something, something happened. So people found Ruby on the internet and uh, actually they loved it. Kind of funny though. And uh, they find Ruby, they love to use Ruby, they use Ruby, and they even wrote a book on Ruby. So year 2000, the, the Big Cox book was out. The, the famous Dave Thomas found Ruby, and he loved it. He even wrote a book on it. This is far beyond my expectation. So the, that book was sold, I don't know, to 20,000 copies, and then, so maybe, I assume, maybe half of the people who bought the Pekak books use Ruby, maybe. So the, uh, the estimated total use back then, to, yeah, 2,000, is 10,000. 
Uh, then next year, I got a first RubyConf here in the States, in Tampa, Florida. Uh, attendees, 30 something. <laughs> it was quite small. It was quite the, considering that, that size of the conference, the conference this big is so amazing. Uh, this year, we come in Cincinnati. We was I don't know how many, how many? Thousand? Six hundred fifty. Okay, a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> last year. Okay, total number of the right now. I have no way to the estimate the number, but a few years ago, the so Gartner said, okay, we will have the, the million Ruby user in some, some years. So I assume, very roughly, we have one million Ruby users out there all over the world. So the users increased one to one million. That's quite a number. So we have far bigger community. So I think the open source community is kind of a weird thing. So what exactly is a community? So community is not an organization. So it's a kind of group of people, but uh, we don't have, we don't really have some kind of membership in the community. So once you feel, okay, I feel I'm a member of the Ruby community, so you became a member of the Ruby community. We have no initiation, we have no uh, entrance fee or anything like that. You just a, we are just a group of uh, people. And uh, we are non-exclusive. So, okay, you are the member of the, the Ruby community. You cannot use any other programming language. <laughs> no. Yeah, we, we, we don't have that kind of rule. So we are non-exclusive. So the, in, as a result, we cannot expect the strong loyalty to the community members. So, okay, I feel uh, uh, I'm a member of the Ruby community today, and then maybe, maybe I'm a member of the Ruby community, uh, a mem okay, I'm a member of, say, Go community tomorrow, maybe. Or maybe I'm a Ruby, uh, member of the Ruby community, and at the same time, I'm a member of the PHP community. So, and then if you feel bored in, in the Ruby community, you just leave. So we need to attract community to survive. Otherwise, community members will go away, so we eventually disappear in the history of the internet. Okay, we had a, once upon a time, we had a language named Ruby, but uh, we don't use anymore. So we will eventually fade away. So the I uh, consider, I assume that OS community is like a shark. So we have to keep swimming or we die. I'm, so in the bigger the technology community, so I'm sick of hostile com com claims like a Ruby is dead, just because Ruby's gems have less GitHub stars on the, the GitHub, <laughs> or maybe because Ruby doesn't have static typing, because Ruby is no longer shiny languages. Any technology cannot stay shiny for long. And then Ruby has more than 20 years of history, and even Rails has more than 10 years of history. And then more history, and we have more burden. So we have to do something to survive. Make Ruby great <laughs> again. <laughs> 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 
What shall we do? Uh, rebuilding the language. So other programming languages did similar things. Like uh, we, the PHP community once tried a version named PHP 6. What happened? No. So <laughs> <laughs> they tried to create a better PHP in the, na name, uh, in the name of the PHP 6, but they failed. They tried too drastic. And then they couldn't make it. So the PHP 6 disappears in the history. And then they try again the PHP 7, and it worked well. ECMAScript 4, what happened? No. <laughs> so they created, they tried to create the better ECMAScript. So they tried, a lot, they tried hard, and they created, they tried to create great ECMAScript version 4, but they couldn't make it. They retried. They tried to recreate ECMAScript 4, and they failed again. Then they, he, they just gave up the version, ECMAScript version 4. And uh, it doesn't mean the failure of the JavaScript, but the only one version, only the failure of the, the, the approach, the starting from scratch. So that's not good. We have the other examples, like a Pro, Pro 6, which last year we finally had Pro 6. Whoa. But it took 15 years to design and implement the Pro 6. Python 3? Yeah, they are moving towards Python 3. And we had, we had no, we are no exception. We had similar things we had in uh, we one nine. We replaced the, the virtual machine and we have many things including encoding support. But uh, at the, instead, we got huge compatibility gap between 1.8 and 1.9. So it took more than six years to migrate from uh, the Ruby 1.8 to Ruby 1.9. So the, those incompatible change caused, so, uh, we got Ruby 1.9, we got slightly better Ruby, and then we got faster Ruby, far faster than, uh, Ruby 1.9 was far faster than Ruby 1.8. But migration took six plus years. So the, during those time, so the we core, core members to improve the Ruby 1.9 and they leave 1.8 behind because it, it's old. But the people keep, kept using 1.8. So no matter how hard we worked on 1.9, people still using 1.8. Just pity. So we had more than six years of slow progress in the community. This is so bad. I don't want that. So I learned a lesson. We shouldn't just make a language better. It's not enough. Ruby is not the first language out there. Ruby is not the most powerful language. We use Ruby because Ruby is good enough for most of the case. For, for our daily use to, to create web application or for web admin or something like that. And we use Ruby because Ruby is comfortable to use. So we use Ruby because Ruby is nice. So, and uh, we love, I hope, we love uh, Ruby's human-centric design. So Ruby is nice, so we are nice. Green swan. <laughs> uh, being nice could bring power. Be nice. So the being, keeping compatibility is one of them. 
So compatibility is very important for us, not because we are conservative or not because we are afraid of changes, but because it makes us progress. Yeah, think about the 180 era. So we, make, we try to make progress in the community, but the people keep using the old version. But if we could, kept, we could keep the compatibility, so people the, use newer version, and the whole community can progress forward with us. So without compatibility, the community keep using old versions. They don't pursue beauty of the software. You know, as a language designer, I want my programming language better. I want my programming language beauty, being beauty, and I want to make uh, programming language that better and better, and uh, cut out old design. Yeah, or, or maybe I fail sometimes in the design, so I want to cut out old failures in the design. Yeah, that's my, my desire. But uh, it's a kind of service trap of designers. Just because, you know, so better language satisfies me, the designer, but uh, sometimes the changing, the incompatible change to make language better would bring you, bring users, pain. That's kind of selfish. So the people tend to look toward myself too much. So consider users. Talk with potential users like this. <laughs> they make a gradual change. Design without uh, with constraint. So the keeping compatibility is kind of design, designing with constraint. Or maybe kind of like a speed run. Under the const the playing the video game with the, under the very strong constraint. So difficult but challenging. So and uh, we can bring benefit to the users. Uh, being nice include uh, the bring benefit to the users. For example, Ruban 9, we, we made some kind of the incompatible change for some reasons, but uh, it, it, it was slightly shorter migration time compared to the other programming languages. Say, yeah. I don't name the language. <laughs> okay, but uh, it performs very well. Ruby 1.9 runs several times faster than Ruby 1.8. Just because of the, the, we have better v, we had a very better VM. So then, you know, I, I don't consider myself as a super, super programmer. I'm a language designer. But, uh, you know, the hobby, hobbyist, so the virtual machine implementer. So the, the virtual, virtual machine we found in Ruby 1.9 was far better than the, my, the original version. It runs several times, now 50 times maximum faster than the old version. So the, oops. because of that kind of benefit, so the, we have the slightly shorter migration time. But even with the several times faster performance boost, so it would take years. So the keeping compatibility is very, very important. So okay, the design uh, example, concurrency. So we have threads in Ruby. Actually, I regret it. <laughs> Everybody loves threads, right? I hate threads. <laughs> so in the very early stage of Ruby development, I thought the threading is a, a good idea. Uh, but uh, we had some, uh, we had some uh, false assumption. Back then, we, have, we, we had only one core 
on the computer. So we don't care about the performance. We just, uh, I just considered about a so no, programming model, like a concurrent, concurrency programming model. So some, uh, some software could be uh, implemented very cleanly using some kind of concurrency model. So I introduced the thread only for that purpose, not for the performance boost. So by that reason, so the Ruby 1.8, the original version, that use green threads, no, no native threads. The Ruby 1.9 uh, started to use uh, the native threads, but we had, the, we had Gil, the global interpreter lock. The threads are very easy, uh, threads are the easiest way for concurrency, so that is the reason I introduced the threads in Ruby and then, but uh, to utilize multi cores, it's, I mean, the real concurrency or parallelism is quite hard. Uh, the problem is, so the, the Ruby threading does not use uh, multi cores. We have the global interpreter lock. And uh, it was a pro problem in the past, just because we had only one core for a computer. But uh, it, it wasn't a problem in the past. But uh, right now, we have multi-cores in the computer. So the real, thread, real threading in Ruby can easily cause problems, like a deadlocks or race conditions. So the, if you're a C programmer, it is quite easy to remove gear from Ruby, C Ruby source code but I'm sure your threading program will crash very, very easily. So the shear states, so cause very hard non-deterministic bugs very easily. So for that reason, I regret that in threads. But the two keep compatibility, I just cannot remove threads from the language, right? So I don't think we can remove it. Then what? Removing Gale? No, it will crush your program. Adding a new abstraction? Probably, yes. Last year, in, the, in this keynote, in the RubyConf last year, I talked about the streaming model I was experimenting for Ruby 3. I gave it up. <laughs> After serious consideration, that, that streaming model was too restrictive. So this year, we present a new model, Guild. And uh, we have a session of, uh, that talk, talk about uh, uh, the Guild, the new, new concurrency model. And then it was tomorrow, I guess. Okay, but uh, let me briefly introduce <laughs> Yeah, Gil rhymes with Gil. Uh, the, it's a membership model. Uh, every object belongs to the guild. No more objects are not shared between guilds. You can transfer object between guilds. So you can only transfer. So one object belongs to one guild at a time. Each guild run on an independent thread, so the, the, every uh, guild run in a parallel, run in parallel with the guild. So guilds wrap the existing Ruby world. So in, inside of the guilds, you can run threads. You can have everything, including threads. So that is introducing the real concurrency, parallelism, into the language, keeping compatibility. So Koichi, yeah, who came up with the guild idea and the name, <laughs> we will have a session about it tomorrow. So ask him in detail, for detail. Okay, example two, the static analysis. 
uh, the, in this decade, the static type programming language is pretty popular. TypeScript, Flow, Go, Swift, and then, and then the, the format two is adding static types to JavaScript, the dynamic type programming language. And then Python and PHP are the type declarations. So explicit type declaration is pretty popular among uh, in, in present day, present time. So we have benefit of static type, type, static type language. So early error detection, the better coverage, and then more documentation. So, so we have this argument, this argument, that argument. The, each argument has this type of that type. Uh, but the, the, this kind of the explicit uh, static, type, static type has some kind of drawbacks. So we have more code just because we had a declaration to the language. So and less flexible. So the, you know, by adding the type declaration, we often use the, mel the benefit of duck typing. So that some programming languages, some static type programming language addressing uh, these drawbacks for, for by adding type inferences so that you, you cannot, you, you don't have to add a type declaration in your program. Or maybe the structural typing to keep the duck typing uh, the kind of, kind of similar to duck typing. So the, everyone knows duck typing, right? No. Duck typing is this. <laughs> no, this is typing duck. No, this. This is typing with duck. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is duck typing. Anyway, if it works like duck, quack like a duck, we assume it is a duck. So we don't care about inheritance. We don't care about structure. We just care about how it behaves. So we can ignore inside detail. So we ask computers to dispatch. Things should just work. That's duck typing. So in that sense, this is a duck because it works like duck. This is a duck too <laughs> because it quacks like a duck. So the interface in Go is kind of similar to duck typing. Like, a, like this. So we define the log DSD interface. So every object that w comes with the method with write works with the function log. You can put the log output to any object that has the write method. So you don't have, unlike Java, so the, the class does not have to implement the interface beforehand at the declaration time. But uh, every class, every object that comes with the right method would work for log, log function. So this is kind of duck typing. This is called the structural typing. And then adding structural typing with, with type inferencing so that enables statically typed, statical typing without declaration, like crystal. You know the crystal language, right? Yeah, crystal is a derivation. You know, some uh, Ruby-like language, uh, which is which comes with the uh, the static type, the type inference and then compile to the binary using LLVM. This is quite a nice language. Uh, the, we are going to one step further, no declaration at all. Everything inf inferenced, but uh, why no declaration? Because it's against dry. Don't repeat yourself. 
So it is the principle to avoid redundancy. So I am a true believer of dry. So I try to dry extremely. So if you can write or execute a program without something, just remove it. So our program, our current Ruby program, run without any type of correlation. So we just have to, have to remove them. So Ruby program runs with the type annotations, so we don't need them, so we need to remove them. The, this kind of type system, the structure typing plus inference, and a, no, no type of correlation. So I name it dark inferencing. <laughs> Uh, dark inference is almost equal to structure typing with inferences, like OCaml. So dark inference is a type system defined by behavior. So behavior is a set of methods and argument behaviors. And uh, inferred types do not have names. You don't have to worry about type names. The vague idea in your brain can remain vague. So the naming things is a hard thing one of the most difficult problem. So the, you can retrieve a type of an expression so by an anal analyzing your code. So the computers or compilers can read your mind, read uh, the, the understand your expectation to this expression or this object. So you can check compatibility between types. You can check if a type has a method. So the dark inference, that kind of dark inference without any type declaration is not perfect. Don't challenge 100% coverage. But 80% compile time is far better than 0% right now. Uh, it can easily fall back to the dynamic typing right now. So in addition, we will use some kind of ad hoc type information, like a find type errors from contradiction, like, a, like this. The, the, this log function has two methods, which, is, which we assume the different ducks. And then one dux has a right method, and the other, uh, other duck can be anything. But the, 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 the other duck, duck B, is the argument of right, and all right method in the in the application takes a strings as an argument. So the duck B, which is the type of the, the B, type of a, of the message, should be should behave like a string. Or if the the variable A takes methods, G sub, slice, and map, but uh, look up. Look up in this application. There's no class have uh, G solve all of the G solve slash map. So this is a contradiction. So there something should be wrong. So it should be a, an error. So the the static analysis can cause error from that kind of contradiction. <clears throat> or maybe we can use some kind of runtime type information, especially from tests. So you run, you write tests, right? Yeah. I sometimes forget. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we write tests. We encourage you to write tests. If our civilization is pr progressed enough, so we can communicate to the compiler so that we can tell the, our intention somehow. So it, at that time, so we will no longer write, have to write tests. But uh, until then, we write tests. So tests should run without error. So that the, the test runtime information, you can retrieve type information, runtime type information. So <laughs> why am I so insistent to adding type declaration to the language? Think about the future. So I'm very nearsighted. So if I took my glasses, I cannot see any face. So everything blurs. So I can see my hand. 
So the people tend to look very nearsighted. People tend to be very nearsighted. So at the present technology, adding type declaration is the very reasonable way to gain benefit from static typing. That's, be that's behind the reason the PHP and Python and the other programming language add optional static typing by adding some kind of type declaration to the language. But uh, think about the far distant future. The programming language evolved to be more and more concise. So very early stage of computers, everything is written in machine language, in assemblies. It was so uh, verbose, verbose. And uh, the programming language uh, evolved to become more and more concise. So we can do more things with less code. So adding declaration is the opposite way of to, toward the, uh, the evolution of programming languages. The future is less code and more communication between man and machine. So seeking uh, expectation in, my, in our mind. So typing by class is only an approximation. So typing by class is too restrictive. So the, we, the drawbacks is without type declaration, we have less documentation. So we add this kind of stuff in any way. That is contra contradiction. So I don't want to specify types for flexibility and uh, to dry. But we need documentation anyway for users. So, but uh, if we put type information in documentation, like that, that, that example before, so it's static typing without enforcement and check. So it's, without compile time check, it's kind of worse of both worlds. So the, the type checks, the compile time type checks of dynamic type of language. <laughs> and uh, the verbosity of static type uh, documentation. So the type annotation is a bad idea, I think. Mixed gradual typing is a bad idea, for Ruby at least. But uh, here's room for improvement for future Ruby. So dark inference will provide type database for its gems and for your app. You can retrieve a type information from an, of an expression, so you can check compatibility between types, or you can check if a type, uh, type has a method. So you, any editor or IDE can access that database so, you, that, so that they can uh, use it for code completion or real-time type check. So, or you will have sort of documentation from if, inferences. May, or maybe we can work with the YAR documentation. So we rewrite, for the time being, so for near future, we write the type info in YAR documentation anyway. So we can check the YAR documentation type, type information in, in, in static analysis. In that case, we have to carefully avoid nominal type checks. Anyway, that kind of the static analysis sounds great, right? But, uh, but you can't use it now. <laughs> it's still more concept. So we have a lot of things to be done. We have to work with other tools, like I editors, IDs, gems, and uh, profiling tools, and uh, the static analysis tools. But uh, I'm sure it will benefit the community. And uh, so that kind of uh, benefit is included in the being nice. So we are trying, the we, we who design and implement Ruby, trying to make Ruby nicer. That means more, more powerful Ruby, or more comfortable Ruby, and faster Ruby. Obviously, Ruby community is not just Ruby. 
Ruby is the language, is the only a component of the Ruby community. So we have Ruby gems, we have frameworks, we have tools, and we have you, people, member of the community. So the gems can be nicer, your apps can be nicer, so we need your cooperation to become nicer community. Stronger to me. <laughs> Uh, in summary, be nice. We can be strong, stronger by being nicer. Being nice includes moving forward to survive, keeping compatibility, and the gradual change, making gradual changes, and providing, providing benefits. So moving forward to survive includes uh, the adding new progress or new features, or improvements, uh, or Ruby 3. The Ruby 3 is our goal and our policy. Not because it's easy, but because we need goal. Challenging goal. So the, every goal in Ruby 3, adding new, uh, adding new concurrency model, or having some kind of a static type analysis, or making three times faster than compared to Ruby 2, the every goal is so difficult. It's nearly impossible, I admit. But the, those challenge goals, challenging goals, drive us moving forward. So keeping compatibility is very difficult and challenge task. But uh, we will not break compatibility for no reason. So we. I don't, I don't make promise. We may break compatibility in the future, <laughs> but I provide you reason to break compatibility. So not, not only for my satisfac satisfaction, but for your benefit. Gradual changes. We won't throw things away and restarting from scratch. We will never do that again. We will, we will make the gradual changes. It may take longer time, but it's worth it, I, I believe. The Ruby 3 features will be introduced to Ruby 2x. So you don't have to wait until uh, Ruby 3, a few years later, to, to make Ruby faster or having new, new features. So providing benefit. The better and faster Ruby 3, we, we will provide a better and faster Ruby 3. And uh, the important things is the bottleneck in the community may not be in Ruby. The gems, frameworks, apps, tools, we have a lot of things to improve. So we need more tools and the contributions to make whole community better. So having better Ruby is not enough. So we have to have better gems. We have to, better, uh, we have to have better frameworks. We have to have better applications. So the, these principles can be applied to anything, moving forward to survive, keeping compatibility, and making gradual changes, and providing benefits. So, I encourage, <laughs> I encourage you to apply these principles to your work, your gem, your application, your framework, your everything, to make Ruby great again. So we can be stronger together. <laughs> Ah, uh, very important note. I have no strong opinion against the interaction. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. Uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday, I mean, we had the Ruby 2.4, the preview 3. We have several Im improvements. Faster hash, integer unification, 
beta Unicode case mapping, open system 1.1.0 support. Uh, the faster hash, we started to use the open addressing hash, which is far faster than the previous one. The, this code that contributed by Vladimir Makarov and uh, the help with help and help from Yura Sokolov, and as known, also known as Fanny Falcon. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they they are here, but uh, could you please uh, clap your hands for praise them? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, integer unification. So, in the in the history of Ruby, we have the both fixed nums for small numbers and big num for big numbers. But uh, it is a kind of the the leaky abstraction of the integer implementation. Just because the the smaller number can be embedded in the value, so it is uh, the classified as a fixed nums. And the bigger uh, numbers are too big to fit in, the, fit in uh, the value, so we have to allocate them into the heaps, so we name the, the big nums. But uh, that, that classification is kind of artificial. So after long consideration, we just removed it. So from now on, the integer is an integer. So we have no uh, distinguishing from the Ruby side. So this is kind of the incompatib incompatibility, but uh, it is benefit of the readable uh, concept of numbers. And uh, we have the better Unicode case mapping. So the before 2.4, the case mapping only works for ASCII characters. So the Pokemon. <laughs> The up cases, the 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 e with the accents remain uh, the small uh, small letters, but after 2.4, uh, the by up casing Pokemon works as we expected. So the we makes that kind of improvement here and there for Ruby really 2.4. So each year, December 25th. So I, we release a new version of Ruby 2. So the, this next Christmas, we will have the Ru new Ruby 2.4 with those Im improvements and more. And then good. things will be better each year. And uh, I hope we will have a bright future. Uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> Uh, this is my dog, just in case uh, my, uh, my dog won't envy my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.